Пані і панове, пан Дмитро Шимків, заступник голови адміністрації президента. Ladies and gentlemen, good, uh, good afternoon. I'm happy to see you. The main goal of this brief and of my statement is, uh, you know, I want to uh, launch a process which will be a weekly one, and we will tell you about those events that are taking place in the sector of reforms, what is happening, what concrete actions are taking place, and uh, how we work, in which direction, and to give, and, and we'll try to answer all your questions. And we will, it will be also like a report, and as an executive committee on reforms, and uh, from the administration of the president, on issues of reforms in the country, uh, where we succeed, where we fail. Since the time when I was appointed, a lot of events have taken place. And I would like to group them and I would like to inform, inform you about what is happening and what we are working on. First of all, one of the main tasks uh, the, the president gave to, uh, to, uh, to me uh, to develop the concept of national uh, governance of, by reforms. Why is it important? Many times it was mentioned that we in the country we have three uh, verticals of power and the fourth one like society, civic society, and unfortunately the reforms are not taking place in any direction or in an expected direction. That's why the president initiated to set up the National Council on Reforms. And among the members, we have the president, prime minister, members of the cabinet of ministers, the, head, uh, the speaker of the parliament, and heads of the committees in the parliament, uh, the head of the national bank, and also representatives uh, for representatives of civic uh, groups, of NGOs. Also, we set up an executive committee on the reforms, uh, which is directly executes and uh, uh, provides uh, the work of the National Council on Reforms. And also, it is responsible for preparation of uh, materials, uh, packages, projects of reforms, uh, for all that to be, to be brought to the National Council on, on reforms uh, for a review. Why is it important to have such a plan for, for decisions? It's not a secret. When there are some sectors and without the reforms, and they uh, fail, and there are a lot of dif different opinions about uh, reforms. When we prepare a full package and all the branches of power at one meeting take a decision that such events, such steps should take place, like we should pass certain laws, we should uh, sub laws, and also process of control of, of implementation of reforms, then the executive committee, which includes also representatives of uh, uh, certain of uh, these branches of power, like uh, the president, cabinet of ministers, and the parliament, well, they can all provide a certain control on how decisions of the National Council on Reforms uh, are taking place in reality. The part of the system of management by reforms, there is for that we have an, an advisory council. And we have respected people from uh, all, all over the world uh, who uh, can help with the ad advice. I will, I will tell you about uh, I, every one of them. One of the elements is uh, to set up the, a project office that can uh, develop a uh, and target group, uh, groups uh, can group reforms, and uh, there will be teams uh, that will d develop uh, packages of reforms, because a reform is not just one law. That is a, a whole line of laws, a whole line of regulations, and um, it means also it implies appointment of people and monitoring declared indexes and in reforms. We should we should see benchmark uh, for us uh, uh, benchmark uh, marks uh, for reforms. 
we approved uh, uh, the status of all these uh, structures. And uh, we had the first uh, meeting on the National Council of Reforms with the participation of the president. And that was quite interesting because uh, the president was president, prime minister, the government, and representatives of uh, committees uh, from the parliament, the head of the National Bank also. Some thoughts of the president, some messages of the president uh, I will mention there. That is, reforms should be implemented, for example. And the platform, I mean the National Council of Rome, that is the pl platform of consensus between different branches of power. Our short-term strategy means uh, uh, simplicity, transparency, and attractiveness, and uh, simplicity of any step. Simplification of administration, simple processes, uh, court decisions, and the reform of organi organizing structure which is not taking place in all the uh, agencies, but that's a priority. Transparency, publicity. Uh, I had a meeting with the Civic Council of Kiev, of, N of NGOs of Kiev, and there's a lot of issues, a lot of questions there to transparency. And we should achieve that our uh, government is uh, transparent and attractiveness. Attractiveness of Ukrainian economy, of state, of uh, public service, and all the issues which allow to involve young patriotic people to changes in the country and also investors who would like to invest into this country. That is not easy because investors are looking for countries where it's calm, where it's, everything is clear and our task, a task of every Ukrainian and uh, public, uh, public servant and not only to make Ukraine attractive for investments. Also, the president uh, gave uh, his requirements there to deregulation and also long-term strategy on which uh, I am working with a small team and uh, we advise with NGOs the strategy of uh, sustainable de development 2012 or 20 and very soon it will um, publish it and uh, it will be quite a new approach at what we used to before. There will be, it will be more concrete, more understandable, but the most important that the strategy of the sustainable development is, a, is a, like a backbone of reforms. A backbone of reforms, uh, and that is uh, the agreement on association with the uh, EU. That is the main landmark for the development of the strategy and our vision and vision of the president uh, for the development uh, of Ukraine. Also, the president uh, at that meeting, he gave some task, urgent task, like uh, judicial, judicial reform of judiciary and uh, judiciary. And that's very important because uh, without uh, courts, Without the reforms in judiciary, if our citizens, business, and society, if we are not sure that we are protected by the law, by our court, until we trust uh, the courts uh, and our uh, academic circles, if they don't trust them, now we, the, the trust uh, to the, the courts uh, to the judiciary is on the level of 7%. We should build that uh, uh, trust, and it's a priority. Top the reform of law enforcement bodies, the issue of the reform of anti-corruption um, bureau, the creation of anti-corruption bureau. I believe that in the nearest week we will submit uh, the um, make the submission uh, about the creation of anti-corruption bureau. I will talk about that later. Also, the president emphasized the reform of the health sector. The sector of the country, the he health of the nation, is the guarantee for the security of the state, and that is also an important priority. Now we are selecting representatives to the National Council of Reforms. The National Council of Reforms uh, um, now uh, have uh, uh, the suggested 340 candidates, uh, 119 persons uh, submitted the full package and together with the team that works at the presidential administration and with the executive committee of reforms, we analyzed, we read many, many interesting sometimes uh, unrealistic or maybe realistic non-standard proposals uh, they were quite interesting but every proposal practically has this or that rationale on the 27th of, of uh, august we 
um, presented 20 strategies 2020. 25 participants of the competition were invited as well as experts. I will announce the list of those who were invited. Aspen Ukraine, Naval Ukraine, RPR, Association of Graduates of Foreign Institutions, European Business Association, American Chamber of Commerce, Federation of Employees of Ukraine, International Chamber and Trade, uh, uh, Chamber of Trade, Inter ICPS. Uh, also, there was the strategy of uh, restoring Donbass presented, which was presented by the command uh, of uh, the group from the territorial uh, battalion Donbass. Also, the strategy for Crimea was partially presented. Uh, how we see the restoration of Crimea in the future, that was presented by one NGO from Crimea. In the jury, I don't like the word jury, but the experts who were giving a feedback, that was an interesting discussion. People, organizations were presenting their vision of 2020 with different priorities, indicators, the rate of GDP growth, cultural issues. I can state that unfortunately one of the trends that we have in our society and in all the previous strategies of the development of Ukraine, everyone was concentrated on economic issues. They were forgetting about culture. And we were trying, together with the experts, to talk about the issues of culture, the issues of Ukraine in the world the global space. Also, the representatives of Kiev School of Economics were part uh, of uh, the jury. Now we are working on final decisions, uh, and uh, the uh, 10 uh, proposals will be submitted to the president. We are trying to work transparently. I get a lot of criticism in Facebook, and I'm trying to answer people in Facebook and by email. I would like to say that we uh, follow people, all people who submitted their proposals, because these people are very active, and we will include them into our teams, uh, and uh, especially when we are talking about uh, the European Community uh, Roadmap, uh, which has 25 uh, criteria. Now we are discussing with donors the creation of the project office in order to develop the program of reforms. For example, let's take the public health sector. We need the draft laws, the resolutions of the government, the programs on decentralization, the process, the development of infrastructure, information support. That is uh, quite a comprehensive process. And in order for the project teams uh, to, to start working, because some of them meet, some of them not, uh, for that we want to have a project office of non-state organization. It's not the state who will be doing it. There will be professional project managers who will be helping, helping the co-chairperson where we would like to see the representatives of the government, the heads of the committees from the Verkhovna Rada. Uh, this will be public uh, with the attraction of experts and donors. Uh, so we're organizing this work. Now the, we are discussing that uh, uh, creation of such an office with the EBRD and with the Renaissance Foundation. There were similar models in different countries of the world, especially those who were joining the European community. Such institution was set up in Poland, in Baltic states, and in many other countries. Very often such bodies were state uh, bodies, but uh, at least for a year, for two years, uh, until we renew all the representatives and the authorities, it would be much better if the organization is uh, 
non-state. It will be controlled by donors, and we will be using the best uh, world practices. The Executive Committee of the Reforms. We had the first meeting of the Executive Committee of Reforms. We discussed the reforms which are lagging behind or which are delayed, which we need to push. Uh, and that uh, concerns the Verkhovna Rada and the Cabinet of Ministers. The Strategy 2020, we have a team which is working on that. We meet with experts who develop such strategies. We look at strategies developed by other countries. We are trying to compare our vision with the vision of many other countries. We get the feedback from many experts who are quite critical. They give a very good uh, feedback, and we are trying to be very specific so that average Ukrainian understands what we do and where we are moving. I would like to give you a quotation from the Alice in the Wonderland, why the strategy 2020 is so important. All Ukrainians want to go somewhere. They want Ukraine to move somewhere from the situation where we are. But we need to identify where we are going. It's just like a Cheshire cat answered Alice when she asked, I want to go somewhere from here. And the answer one was, it depends on where you went to get. And uh, it is important for the whole country to have one direction for movement. Some legislative initiatives uh, uh, related to reforms. That's Anti-Corruption Bureau. There were two uh, meetings between different NGOs where they discussed the concepts, they approved the conceptual uh, differences between different organizations as to the vision of Anti-Corruption Bureau. Uh, as to investigatory functions, uh, as to the civil servants uh, in this body. I believe we'll be able to talk about that in more detail. In the nearest future, we were working with the committee from the Verkhovna Rada, with the Cabinet of Ministers of Ukraine, and we worked on many issues in detail in the law, in the draft law. There are aspects which uh, are to be approved. The biggest priority in the draft law is the independence of that body. This body should be maximum independent. Now on some initiatives which are lagging behind. 3G, there was a presidential decree 316 uh, slash uh, uh, 14 on uh, introducing communication technologies. We are looking forward uh, uh, to see the decision of the Cabinet of Ministers, the fr time frame mentioned in the decree uh, has been violated. The announcement of the competition was to be held on the 15th of uh, August, but it didn't happen. So all the actions uh, of the Ministry of Defense, uh, there was the analysis made already, and we are waiting for the decision of the Cabinet of Ministers. Now the issue of the regulation uh, initiatives. On the 13th of August, there was a presentation together with the Ministry of Economy of the regulation initiatives. Uh, uh, there were more than 1,000 of them. There's this website that created Easy Business in Ukraine. There's a feedback there, and there are some specific legislative initiatives there which will help us move forward. Meetings. There were many meetings. I would like to especially me mention the private consultations from Pri Kaha Bindukidza, on the speed of reforms and on specific actions and on the feedback on the strategy 2020. Very important were meetings with the donors the committee of Ukraine. In Ukraine, there are many donors who work with different uh, institutions. Uh, 
I believe we need to communicate more. That's what they expect in the form of this briefing and my meetings with different donors are important now. Also talking about meetings and about feedback, I got many ideas from the ambassadors of Denmark and Sweden on specific reforms, on specific topics, energy independence, energy efficiency. We had meetings with the embassies of the US, Britain, Israel. We get the feedback from them, ideas even from these countries, especially understanding what they were doing and how they were achieving success. It's interesting that most of these countries create the funds which will be helping Ukraine. Now Denmark is working on allocating 15 million Danish crowns, approximately $3 million for setting up Ukrainian-Danish commission team uh, which will be working on the energy efficiency. Denmark is very interesting because in the 70s it had uh, approximately the same energy crisis as Ukraine, but the political will and the program of energy saving allowed Denmark to achieve big uh, success in the economy without increasing energy uh, expenditures in the country. Very interesting initiatives uh, from Sweden on electronic democracy. On the 19th of August, I'm sorry that I give so much information. It's the first time that's why there's uh, so much information. On the 19th of August, there was a uh, a discussion on introducing electronic tenders. Uh, there was an interesting Georgian experience. We do not understand why after passing the law on the 10th of April, we still do not have the norm of introducing electronic uh, tenders for public procurements. We expect that the Ministry of Economy will develop uh, this proposal and we'll see it, one of the initiatives which is discussed in the presidential administration is the fact that all the procurements up to 100,000 grivnas do not require tenders. So we can make an experiment and we can try and make a, a procurement on commercial platforms which exist. We do not spend additional money for that, but we'll get maximum low price for the tasks which uh, the administration of the president needs to fulfill. During this uh, period, uh, these uh, two months, I had a lot of meetings with the donors, as I told you. But very often donors uh, come and tell you how uh, some projects are dead or some initiatives uh, in the country somehow they're stopped. This is first of all about, uh, uh, about I speak, uh, international assistance technical assistance. One of the examples I wanted to give you um, a reform in the healthcare ministry and that's a, a project a project send people in uh, prone health. That's a uh, World Bank's uh, project. Now they develop and um, the World Bank gives m grants for that and we expect that Ministry of Healthcare will bring the project for the council or directors of the World uh, Bank because uh, $324 million to the bankers and uh, those that are alone, and the bank is ready to give uh, to 10 uh, regions of Ukraine and uh, to reform health care. It's not theory, it's uh, practical reforms, uh, it's not round tables, and it's concrete reforms in 10 regions of Ukraine, and there are a lot of such interesting projects because when we analyze that, all that assistance Ukraine gets. That assistance which should be returned, I mean uh, loans, so we should build the process when the society understands what is uh, happening in what we invest uh, money. We should understand also that uh, this, uh, public control over this uh, project, I mean uh, uh, control of, uh, of NGOs. Because sometimes projects are not, uh, there should be such control from NGOs or such uh, projects. This is in general. 
how we are going uh, to work and a lot of uh, a lot of work done and there are uh, we need a quick uh, legislative initiatives and also we need to reduce the number of con um, uh, controlling bodies and we expect uh, from the president from the cabinet of ministers uh, quick steps in this direction now thank you i would like to, uh, to i will be happy to answer your uh, questions this is just a beginning any question When this National Council on Reforms, when will you announce concrete results on the same 3G, uh, you were planning to discuss it on uh, August 15th. Now, when that will happen? As to the National Council of Reforms, uh, uh, the list uh, of members should be uh, approved by the president. And we know that there will be re-elections uh, re in Ukraine. Then there will be new people. So we will, uh, we will consult with the president uh, whether we should uh, wait until elections. But uh, we have the, 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 the government, we have the president. There will be representatives of the parliament also invited. So we should decide whether we include them right now or should we uh, wait for elections and uh, until uh, heads of the committees are appointed as to representatives of uh, NGOs I believe that we'll decide uh, that this week and uh, next week we'll announce the list of NGOs and people who will be represented in the National Council on Reforms as to 3G we have we expect expect that cabinet of ministers uh, will consider this issue at the meeting of the government and because uh, there are uh, projects and there is a draft regulation of the cabinet of ministers everybody all structures public structures uh, responsible for this uh, uh, project uh, they are waiting for the decision so the, the cabinet of ministers has to give that answer as to deadlines when we speak, uh, if uh, we speak about the Anti-Corruption Bureau, the, the draft law will be uh, brought to the Parliament this week because we want uh, the Parliament to have a vote next uh, next week. And uh, the country needs that because uh, the issue, we should understand, if we pass a law, it doesn't solve uh, the uh, problem of corruption. There should be an institution, and there should be a, a me mechanism to build that institution. And also, then I uh, will need to, to decide who will uh, run it, and uh, there will be a process. And uh, I would like to thank uh, our PR uh, team and uh, teams of many, of many NGOs that participated, and uh, they were ready to, to find a com compromise in discussions, because that was uh, quite a tough discussion as to how Ukrainian Anti-Corruption Bureau should uh, look like. What will this uh, civil council, what kind of authorities it will, will it have? You, say, you said that the list of uh, its members will be announced very soon. Why did you have such a criteria say, to belong to that uh, council? Like an organization should give a report for uh, the year of its existence. Is it uh, discrimination against uh, those organizations that exist less than a year? And uh, will the list of members change? And how? If we when we speak about okay, why did we have some some criteria? We had to decide on criteria of uh, representation because uh, uh, representatives from NGOs, and we have only four seats. When we looked at criteria, for example, they sent uh, proposals uh, just uh, just a person. I received a lot of calls uh, from, from uh, civil servants, and they are in uh, NGOs these days. And new newly newly found NGOs. So everybody who called, uh, they, I gave an uh, an answer. A new life means a new life. So no phone calls, just prepare your proposals and we'll consider them. 
We looked at the quality of their preparation and on content on how they can, because as someone who will work on the, on the National Council on the reforms, so that should be a person who is a public, who is public and who has the function of uh, civic control. And also uh, that person will participate in discussion of final proposals of reforms, reforms that will be presented by the ministers in the National Council of Reforms. As to a role of every member we have uh, a document which describes, uh, so it's a council. It's responsible to the decisions on different reforms. Thank you. More questions? I have a question. How the decision of the, uh, of the president to announce new elections and uh, to dismiss this uh, parliament, how will it, will it influence on the reforms? I think it will encourage reforms. We need we need a new parliament. Uh, we need the parliament that understands uh, why do we have reforms in the country and uh, the parliament uh, that doesn't stand for its personal interests. Today we expect that, that uh, the parliament and the parliament and a new generation will come to the parliament. We cannot. Uh, set up uh, criteria uh, criteria in our uh, National Council on Reform said that uh, it's important uh, to have young people. But I would like to see young generation. Yes, it's, there should be institutional memory like 30 percent, 20 percent. But new blood, new blood in uh, our uh, public bodies, that's critically important. We need uh, we need uh, new people come to with new ideas and uh, and uh, we uh, we shouldn't have an excuse. We uh, did it always like that. No, we need to do it in a new way, like they did in new country, uh, countries. The government should be efficient, and uh, the council should take decisions. If, if it doesn't uh, take uh, decisions, uh, there should be arguments for that. And the reforms should be completed. We should consider several variants of reforms for us to have a discussion, like health care, for example or social reform, and uh, we should uh, see two projects. Uh, we should see also I uh, numbers, and also as uh, what we saw during, uh, from, uh, uh, we saw proposals there from NGOs, and uh, they, uh, they, some of them, uh, they uh, provided very good uh, projects uh, with understanding how to move and with numbers, and they are very superficial, uh, with a lot of declarations. Uh, that's very important. But when we uh, want to involve, bring somebody to the National Council, we need these people to uh, combine two things: a declaration, uh, with understanding how to do concrete steps, concrete vision and involvement a lot, a big network, network of people with experience. So we took that into consideration. If an organization has 100 members and uh, versus an organization that represents uh, 1,000 people and uh, they think similar, so we gave uh, the advantage to an organization that has 1,000 members because they could spread uh, or involve more people. It doesn't mean that those who don't pass uh, to the National Council of Reform that they will not be, uh, they will not participate. No, we'll involve them as experts, and we are working with some of them already. Well, in the end, I wanted to say that we'll have a regular meetings. So it's I will, it will be my duty. I promise that I will come every Tuesday to Ukraine, Ukraine Crisis uh, Media Center and will report on our work. Thank you very much for such a detailed report on the first steps. And, uh, and we'll see Dmitry Shimkiv next Tuesday. Thank you very much.